The planet Jupiter and its surrounding moons may be the most mysterious place in our solar system, an unfathomably gigantic gaseous world where perpetual storms rage over an ocean of electrified liquid metal, surrounded by a massive belt of intense radiation and a motley crew of satellite moons that manage to include both the most violent volcanic body in the solar system and the most likely place to find alien life. Things get weird around Jupiter, and that's why NASA has such a heavy interest in studying the planet and its system. From Galileo to Juno, we've already learned a lot about how Jupiter operates. But with every new discovery comes even more unanswered questions. So, we are going back again and again, continuing the investigation of Jupiter far into the 21st century. So, let's talk about some of the mysteries that NASA is still trying to solve. This is the space race. We use the term gas giant a lot, and that's an easy way to get the gist of what a planet like Jupiter is made of. But there is a lot of really weird stuff going on in and around all of that gas. So obviously Jupiter is gigantic. For a sense of scale, if the Earth was a grape, then Jupiter would be a basketball. Jupiter is so much an interstellar landmark that the old Galileo Galilei from the 1600s was able to identify it clearly along with the four largest moons using just his handheld telescope. But for all of its massive size, Jupiter has a very low density, only about one quarter that of the Earth. So that's how we know that it has to be made up of mostly gas, and the majority of the composition has to be hydrogen and helium, because those are the two lightest known elements. It's actually a very similar composition to the Sun. The two, surprisingly, have a lot in common. We all know the surface of Jupiter pretty well. It's an insane technicolor of raging storms and cloud patterns. The colors of the surface are created by the exposure of the ammonia-based clouds to solar radiation. The youngest clouds on Jupiter are white. Those have just been churned up from below the visible surface. The reddest clouds are the oldest. Those have absorbed the most light from the sun. And then, as you move away from the equator towards the poles, more blue color enters the mix. For some reason, we're not totally sure why that is yet. The infamous red spot on Jupiter is a massive storm that has been raging for the entire time that people have been able to observe the planet. It's a reverse cyclone storm, or anti-cyclone spinning counterclockwise with wind speeds that reach 300 miles per hour. We're not sure how old it is or if it's a permanent feature of Jupiter. We do know that the spot has shrunk and changed shape over the relatively small period of time that we've been watching it. The spot went from an oval shape about three times the diameter of the Earth down to a relative circle that is now just a bit wider than the Earth. But that's not even the most interesting storm on Jupiter. Have you ever seen Jupiter's South Pole? It's the craziest thing. There are six permanent cyclone storms raging at the pole. Five of them are arranged in a near-perfect geometric pentagon shape, or pentagram if you're so inclined, with the sixth storm perfectly in the center of it all. It looks exactly like the portal to hell. It's terrifying, but fascinating. And the North Pole is even more active, just far less ominous looking. It's one giant cycle surrounded by a near-perfect circle of eight smaller cyclones. The running theory is that this stormy cloud layer goes down for thousands of kilometers from ammonia-based clouds at the top, and it likely transitions to water-based clouds down lower. There is an enormous amount of water in Jupiter's atmosphere, so much that it was likely water from Jupiter that seeded the Earth and created life here. At some point, the clouds give way to the inner layers of hydrogen, and this gets really weird. As the heat and pressure builds up within the planet from its massive gravity well, the hydrogen is going to be compressed into a liquid form. So at some point down there, it is an ocean world. And then deeper and deeper into the ocean, the temperature and pressure build up so high that the hydrogen takes on a liquid metal state. They call this metallic hydrogen. It's probably a lot like liquid mercury, and that pressure also breaks the electrons free from the hydrogen atoms, which creates a free flow of electrical charge through the liquid metal. And then, down there, somewhere in the middle, there is a collection of solid rocky material, but there is no solid core at the heart of Jupiter. 
Scientists like to refer to it as a fuzzy core, meaning that the solid rock and metal is all kind of intertwined with this hydrogen mass. There's no clear line of delineation between the two, and we're not sure why that is either. And then, moving back outwards, there is this giant belt of extreme radiation that surrounds the planet Jupiter. It's the most radioactive area of the entire solar system. This is caused by the huge and powerful magnetic field that Jupiter creates from its electrified hydrogen center. All of Jupiter's moons are orbiting inside of this magnetosphere. It is huge. This magnetic field traps all of the charged particles in space around Jupiter. The collection of particles comes from Jupiter's own atmosphere, along with captured particles from the solar winds. But the largest source of matter actually comes from Jupiter's closest moon, Io. Io is the most volcanically active body in the entire solar system. The volcanic eruptions are so violent and epic that they can be clearly seen from space by orbiting satellites. These volcanoes dump about one ton per second of sulfur dioxide gas into the region of space around Jupiter, which all gets trapped by the magnetic field, where the molecules are broken apart and ionized in radioactive material. On the other end of the spectrum of Jupiter's Galilean moons is Europa. The surface of this moon is actually the smoothest body in the solar system, meaning that it does not have any high mountains or low valleys. There are hardly any craters on Europa, which is weird considering it is just about as old as the solar system and should have the battle scars to show it. So we know that the surface of Europa is made of solid water ice, and it is being constantly resurfaced like a hockey rink with a Zamboni. The distinguishing features of Europa's surface are the long cracks all over the planet. They show up as these dark red veins that randomly snake across the surface. The color likely comes from clay-like minerals that are coming up from under the crust. And from the combination of the cracking and young smooth surface, we know that there must be a layer of liquid water hidden beneath the frozen surface. Now, the surface of Europa is unfathomably cold. There is no warmth from the sun this far out, so the water is frozen as hard as granite. We think that the liquid interior is made possible by geothermal heating from within the solid rocky core of the moon. The heat of the core and the frequent cracking of the surface are both caused by the pull of gravity on Europa by Jupiter. This is called tidal flexing. It's a similar process to how the moon affects the oceans here on Earth, but ramped up to a much higher power where the gravity from Jupiter is constantly stretching and compressing Europa all the way down to its core. This pumps energy into the center of the moon and generates heat. So in theory, at the point where the rock ends and the water begins, there should be very hot thermal vents. We actually have the same thing happening at the bottom of the ocean here on Earth, and these areas are known hotbeds for life to thrive. It's not guaranteed, but definitely possible that the same occurrence is happening right now inside Europa. The reason that we know all of these crazy things is thanks to a series of deep space missions by NASA that have been able to spend time photographing and measuring Jupiter and its closest moons. From the Voyager spacecraft to Galileo to the most recent Juno mission that is still active in the Jupiter system. In fact, Juno just made this new image of Io in December 2022. It's an infrared photo that shows all of the volcanic hotspots on the moon's surface. And humanity has plans for even more ambitious exploration missions to come. NASA is sending an orbiter to Europa in 2024 that they call the Clipper. This probe will help us determine the characteristics of the subsurface ocean, the chemical components of the atmosphere, the surface features, and the nature of the magnetic field around Europa. This investigation will get us a lot closer to determining whether the moon actually has the capabilities to host life. To avoid prolonged exposure to the radiation of Jupiter, the Clipper won't hang out around Europa for the entire mission. Instead, it's going to take a wide orbit that passes through the exposure zone just once every two weeks and make a scan of Europa as it passes by. There is so much radiation around Jupiter that it's actually destructive to computers and robotics. So, orbiting Europa would make for a very short mission duration. It would be a race to collect and transfer data before the ship is killed off by the planet Jupiter. 
Instead, there will be around 50 flybys during the course of the four-year mission, with the closest pass bringing the ship within 25 kilometers or 15 miles. The ship takes its name from the three masted clipper ships of the 19th century that were able to move goods across the ocean in just two weeks. The hope is that clipper will arrive at Europa by 2030. Not to be outdone, the European Space Agency has their own plans to explore the Jupiter system. Their probe is called the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, or JUICE. Its mission will be to explore Jupiter and three of its icy moons, Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa. The ultimate goal for ESA is to provide the most comprehensive exploration yet of Jupiter and its moons, particularly looking for habitable zones in the subsurface oceans that might harbor the first known life outside of Earth. JUICE is due to launch from the spaceport in Kourou, French Guiana in April 2023. It will travel across our solar system to hopefully reach Jupiter in 2031. So that's why Jupiter is such a key point of interest for NASA and the world's interstellar research. There is so much to be seen and studied and discovered in the giant planet and the space surrounding it. The Jupiter system is essentially like a mini solar system in itself. The more we understand about Jupiter, the more secrets we will unlock about the origin of our entire solar system and the nature of life as we know it. It only sucks that we have to wait like seven years now until we get to see what this next generation of deep space probes is capable of. But let us know in the comments section what you are hoping to see discovered or studied at Jupiter and its moons. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.